Hey guys, another video for our buying a house in Japan playlist. Some of you might remember this old shed at the back of the old farmhouse. About seven years ago, the unskilled labourer put a bit of paint on there. But as you can see, the rust is starting to creep through. We're a little bit concerned that it might go all the way through and water might start to get inside. It's not a big deal that buildings only used to store building materials and also for some machinery for the mower and for a few other bits of equipment. So it's not a very important building. It's at the back of the main house, so it's not very important, but we don't want it to start falling down. And if the water gets through the roof, obviously it's going to start rotting the timber and it'll cause all sorts of problems. However, there's a good chance that sometime in the next 10 years, the main house and this building will all get demolished. So we have to keep in mind that any money we put into this building is pretty much going to be thrown away. So the prerequisites are that any money we spend has to save us either money or time in the long run. But we don't want to overcapitalize it. So it's the same problem every time we do a job at the old house, we have to weigh up all those things. So as you can see, we've got the first room had the building materials. This room's got a bit of equipment. Very handy building. We don't want it falling down. So we had a look from underneath. There's no sign. You can see the tin there through the wood. The tin on, on the underside is fine. It's the top that's rusting. So there's no holes yet. So as long as we give it a coat, we think it'll be okay. So we decided to give the main roof a coat. But that little awning out the front obviously is shot, so it has to be replaced. Went around the side and had a look. This little awning here, as you can see, is a bit rusty, but it's not really important. Don't really think that's a problem. One day, if we have a spare sheet of tin that we're not using for something else, we might pull the old one off and put a new one on, but it's not really important. You just have to watch it. With these old places, it's really easy for the cost to get away. And you think, oh, I'll just add awning, you know, and it's it's twenty dollars for the tin, and it's some bit of money for the paint, and a few nails, and but it sort of goes on and on because then you do that, and then you find that that ridge at the top goes up under the wall, and you got to pull that off, and the jobs can get out of hand. And of course, as you look around an old place like this, it's endless, it's endless. So we happen to have there's a fourteen kilogram can of paint there that's about mm, half full so that'll do the roof we estimate that'll do the roof so all we need now is one unskilled laborer because we can't afford labor a real professional to do it and we've got this cool roller that's actually designed for the corrugated roof so we didn't want to put the old school labor is such a fat old dude that about 100 kilos so if he goes stomping around on that roof it might just do damage that ends up putting a hole in it and at the moment there's no hole so we gave him a long stick and the roller and told him to get to work that was a pretty shiny day out there it's beautiful weather as you can see it's beautiful weather at the moment it's spring But that silver roof, <laughs> way shiny, way shiny, like being on top of a mountain in the snow, really, really shiny and bright. So it should be enough. This is Totan paint. It's, uh, it's paint for tin, for the tin roofs. And it has some rust inhibitor in it. So it should do it. I mean, again, we weigh it all up. It ended up the total cost of this project was $100. Because we already had the paint, we already had the nails, we just needed some tin, and as it turned out, we needed a bit more paint, another seven kilo of paint. And that roller, that roller's new. So the whole thing was $100. So if you weigh that up, $100 plus the unskilled labourer worked for, oh, maybe 20 hours maybe 20 hours, maybe a bit more, 25 hours, all up. So while we're on that topic, there's there's about five people who like watching these videos. And 
we like making them because they're a bit of fun with the before and after and everything but geez they're a hard video to make because we've got to shoot hours and hours of film of video and then it takes a lot of time to edit it and put it all together so it's a huge it is a huge job probably the most difficult video we make you've got to keep stopping the bat the cameras run out of batteries and run out of memory so you've got the front finished and of course we've got to go around the back haven't we start again but the surface to work from the, the ground surface to work from is obviously not as good anyway did that and then off to the home center for some more tin to do that awning so we need 60 centimeters was the width of that awning or the length of the, the sheets on that awning so these ones are 180 so four of those cut into three and the home center actually lends you a truck you just have to give them your driver's license your japanese driver's license and they lend you a truck for up to two hours so just threw the tin in the back and the can of paint on top to stop it blowing away back home and then cut it up measure it up into thirds so end up with 61 centimeters it says 180 centimeters in the shop but it's actually 183 so three sheets 61 centimeters long and this stuff's only half a mil thick it's the thickest stuff they've got it's only half a mil thick it's really thin that's the other reason we didn't want the fat man up walking around on this stuff so but you can cut it because it's so thin you can cut it with with good cutters so we've got special cutters that are for corrugate so the next thing of course you don't know you always start these jobs with a bit of a plan a bit of an idea of what you're going to do but you don't know and some of you who've watched the previous videos will know that sometimes we've lifted up this lip and found that the tin goes up under the wall and we've actually had to take the sheets off the wall we had a few big jobs get right out of hand like that and then we had the other one recently where we had to actually cut the big nails from underneath because we couldn't get to, from, to them from the top. And you just don't know until you start pulling the things apart what you're going to find. So we got up there, pulled the nails out, and then it was like, okay, what's going to happen now? How far, how far back do we have to go? And we have to pull the wall off. And once that starts to happen, we've had that before, and it really gets out of hand. Pull, pull, and out it came. So it turns out there was under that lip there was a couple of nails on each sheet but they only just got them by about a centimeter which meant giving it a good pull was actually tearing the sheet away from the nail which is fine so that got them all off which is a bit of a relief because it was like oh, i really don't want to pull that wall off so keep in mind no one really sees this it's at the back of the house and no one really sees it and interesting too after that roof was painted one of our family members actually came around and stood and watched for a while and i asked her what had been done so far and she had no idea so that main roof had been painted you know so it wasn't rusty anymore and she had no idea what had been done can't don't know don't know <laughs> so no one really notices so it's not for aesthetics it's not for what it looks like that this job's taking place but of course it's hard to do a job like this and try not to make it look good you know there's a natural instinct isn't there when you're doing something you want to do a good job and, and make it look good but of course you've got the fact that it's a really old building and that actually messed this part of the job up at first this was going pretty well and then it just got it just went bad some of these jobs some sometimes they go really smoothly and sometimes they don't now getting those sheets off went really smoothly but getting these ones on the gap where we would pulled the old sheets out of the gap was really tight so to get these sheets back in that gap was really difficult and then of course what happened was the building wasn't square or the awning support beam thing wasn't square which meant we started off and because squared it all up at the other end but as it went along here the sheet at the back got further and further from the gap it was supposed to slide into you're still with it you're still with the story <laughs> so around here it got really tricky couldn't support the thing at the back there was nowhere for it the back of it to go and it was just a pain and then had to cut little pieces because those nails were still in there and there was some posts in there too so I had to cut little pieces out of the back of the sheet 
and then put an extra sheet underneath at this end to support the sheets on the top. All with the goal of trying to get the front all to line up nice and straight. And the first half was perfect. And then by the time we got to the second half, it was just a nightmare. This job was just a nightmare. Kept Things kept falling off the roof and falling off the ladder and dropping tools. And some days everything you touch turns to gold. And some days everything you touch turns to brown. <laughs> so then that piece of wood that new piece of wood there that was the solution in the end wasn't we weren't happy with the back where it went into the slide so the old fat man put two pieces of wood along there and then put screws up through that wood through the tin and into the wood above to make it more secure because we get some killer winds around here and this particular part of the house the back of the house here gets really serious winds so if there's typhoons and stuff this back of the house here really gets a caning so wanted that fairly strong so again only spending a hundred dollars but it'd be nice if this work i mean the first paint job that we did on this place lasted for seven years and then the rust started to get through so if we can get another seven years out of it you know or 10 preferably probably about 10 years from now the place will get sold and all this stuff's going to get demolished so all we want to do is preserve it keep it in good condition for that amount of time and keep it usable so that we can still use it because it's a very handy space as you can see brilliant for keeping the building materials in and tools and great place to work all weather you can go in there all weather and work in there and it's quite pleasant those of you who've lived in mud walled houses because of course same as the main farmhouse and and this building and the other building next to us here all of them have mud walls and the mud wall is just such a brilliant insulator that you go in there in summer and it's reasonably cool you go in there in winter and it's reasonably warm it's quite a pleasant environment to go in there if there's a project to be done so this is this bit was just for the aesthetics that gutter that runs along there is looking a bit dodgy and it's got a bit of silver paint splashed on it by the fat man so thought about replacing it the cost just as a matter of interest the cost of materials to replace the roof was about five hundred dollars that's why we didn't do it went with the paint and the cost of replacing the guttering and the downpipes there was about 150 and it's just not worth it you know it's only to catch water so the compromise was that we had some brown paint left from another job so the compromise was just to use that brown paint and give the the gutter a bit of a spray just to make it look a bit better so that that's purely aesthetic of course and it will work because we've actually got down pipes and gutters that we sprayed seven years ago and they're still fine the paint's still on them so that paint takes to that plastic guttering pretty well pretty flimsy stuff that plastic guttering as you can see it sort of warps and twists in the weather doesn't age real well the frustrating thing when you're doing a project like this in Japan the materials it's hard to get good materials you know you've got the tin that's half a mil thick and you've got plastic guttering and plastic fittings and it's a bit frustrating because a lot of the stuff's just not made to last you know we want to get getting we want to get 10 years out of these projects and the materials really aren't up to that but we do the best with what we've got so also spraying under that roof that where the, where it comes out where there's a bit of an eave there so the top of it's been painted and then the underneath of it a little bit rusty so painting the underneath of it as well just to slow down the rust on the on the underneath side too Just spraying everything in sight basically any tin wood nails screws anything at all that might not appreciate the weather protect everything that's, that we can with the paint because again most of this is just labor isn't it so it looks a bit better doesn't it and again it's not really for the looks it's to keep the keep the rust off if possible so it's galvanized iron but it will rust 
That was a horrible job. That was a horrible job. The the spray gun didn't like being upside down, and the fat man didn't like holding holding well, it was probably about three kilo or something above the head. That was hard work. That's why he kept stopping and going over to that wall <laughs> to let the blood come back to the arms and let the spray can get some paint flowing again because it doesn't like being upside down very much. The problem was too with that paint gun, the compressor is in the other room, is at that back room there, and the compressor's a little bit underpowered for this job. It, it's okay for short bursts for 10 minutes or so, but if you just keep spraying for, for 20 minutes, the pressure drops too low, and then the, the paint flow drops. Oh, here's the next nightmare. <laughs> The, the main roof painted with that roller worked really well, but this short roof, the paint was just too wet, was too, too thin, and the roller had been in, in thinner overnight to stop it going hard. And even though we dried it out, got it as dry as possible, the paint was just too thin and it just kept rolling off the roof, kept, kept dripping off the roof. And trying to do a good job with this paint that was just too thin wasn't working. That that went really well up on the main roof, but on this short roof it just kept running off like a little waterfall. It was really frustrating. So in the end, gave up on the roller and went with a paintbrush, and it did a much better job. Worked much better. It's funny. Some days everything goes well, and some days it doesn't. You just have to keep adapting and changing the plan and. It's always good to have a plan when you start, but it, you never end up following it through. It always ends up changing because you find something else or something doesn't work like you thought it would. You have to be flexible and patient. <laughs> so again, the, the spray gun wasn't working really well on that wall, so took the same roller that we've been using on the roof, which is why the brown has a bit of a silver tint to it. <laughs> but again, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. And just decided the roller was the go, and it really was, made it made a much better job. So I just did the whole door. And again, this is really just to protect it. So if it's a bit silver, it doesn't matter, but then couldn't help. It's really hard not to try and make it look better. You know, all right, okay, give it another coat and get rid of that silver make it look a bit more brown and that was it yep unskilled and unprofessional <laughs> so anyway it's before and after guys it's not a big difference really there's a good chance nobody that comes to this house is ever going to notice the difference family members included nobody really notices but again it's really only to preserve it so as long as it's going to preserve it make it last better again the main goals is to save time and money in the future so if, if a hundred dollars spent now saves a lot of time and a lot of money over the next 10 years which it probably will then it was worth doing so you yeah, no holes no rain coming through there anymore keep that wood dry that wood was not enjoying being wet So it looks a little bit better than it did before, but most importantly, it's going to last much better than it was going to before. So the five of you are still watching. <laughs> it's a long video. We asked the patrons if they wanted this one video or broken up into lots of little ones. The majority vote was one long video. So there it was. More videos coming soon. <laughs>